Hey there again, comic fam. Welcome back to Climbing Comics. I'm Alan, and today we'll be talking about the many ways in which I obtain my comic books. In today's sesh, I'll be talking a little bit about how I collect comic books from brick and mortar stores to online. So it could be an LCS, an FCS, something far away. It could be some normal and not so normal avenues of collecting books, as well as online, because I know there's a lot of ways you could purchase online now, from brick and mortars opening up their own shops to Instagram to eBay, Craigslist, and all these other apps. So I'll be going over my story of this past year and which avenues have worked for me or have not worked for me in that in that case. So let's start off close with the brick and mortar store. So last year, when I started getting back into comics, my LCS was about two miles away. This is my go to shop. This is where I get um, this is where I've started and continue to have my pull list with all of my modern modern books that came out that are coming out. So during the beginning of my recollecting um, last year in 2019, I found that that LCS did not necessarily have all of the types of books I was looking for, for example, Silver Age books. So I went to venture even further out. Uh, there was another LCS, luckily 10 miles away. They had a ton of long boxes with Silver Age books from DC to Marvel to like any any types of books. They even had some Golden Age books. So I went there and I went um, hunting for a lot of these books. But, you know, living in the area that I do and um, having a lot of collectors in the area, I had to check fairly often. Otherwise, once they got a new collection in, a lot of the stuff that I was looking for got picked. So I ended up trying to expand my network, right? So essentially, I have my LCS, my LCS that's a little bit further away. And there are probably another cluster of about three comic shops that I, I go to that's like even further away. They're all within five to 10 miles of each other. So um, when I used to go, I used to um, check out all three. And they all have their different um, nuances and perks and, and, what they, and what they hold. For example, one of the spots was actually all modern downstairs and all Silver Age and Golden Age upstairs. So you actually had to have um, one of the workers kind of show you the upstairs section. So if there's only one worker in, um, in, like in the shop, then you wouldn't necessarily be able to go upstairs. So I would always check to make sure that, oh, is there someone to be able to show me upstairs? But they had a ton of long boxes, a ton of Silver Age books from all different characters and all different publishers. So that was that was really great. That was when, when I first started really building up my Silver Age collection. There's another shop where it was, it was really cool. It's kind of um, like, it's kind of a, a, like a modern shop in terms of they have a lot of they have a lot of modern books. They have a lot of exclusive store exclusives. They had a lot of um, you know, kind of kind of nuanced books. Like they had treasury books and whatnot, and they had a couple of long boxes with Silver Age books. But that was that was prime picking. It was it was fun. It's a a really cool place to hang out. And then there was also a third place that I would go to essentially where it's kind of a mix of both, right? They have uh, modern and silver age long boxes, but they had some special things uh, behind the counter. So I learned after talking to the owner and kind of getting to know the owner and how they, um, it's essentially these two brothers that, that started the shop and um, kind of just talking to them and figuring out their history, how they got into books, what they like collecting. They're like, oh, do you want to check out some cool books? And I was like, yeah, definitely. So uh, they pulled out a couple of the short boxes, one for DC, one for Marvel. And I like kind of pieced through them. And they had some really cool stuff in there from a recent collection that they had just bought from um, from someone, right? So they're like forming these relationships and kind of talking to the people. Like I think that helped open up some avenues for me, right? So they even gave me some recommendations like, Oh, check out estate sales. Maybe there are some places that you could kind of go to. It's like a kind of a like a garage sale, but kind of a set time and place. And then there's a bunch of things that you could look up. And so I've signed up for a couple of those notifications. 
So that was pretty cool. Like I haven't necessarily gone to an estate sale myself, um, but just kind of checking things out that way was, was really cool. So outside of this, there was some kind of non-normal places that I would go to um, that I didn't realize until I found out from other YouTubers and other Instagram folks about uh, places like Half Price Books. So Half Price Books actually has a lot, a lot of books. Um, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot, obviously. It's based off of what people bring in. A, a lot of people will sell their collections directly to local comic shops, but if you have small collections or if they have um, tidbits or maybe they don't know that they could sell back to local comic shops, then they would sell to Half Price Books. So they had a bunch of long, long boxes. Um, there's like this kind of um, wooden crate where they have kind of long boxes and you could kind of piece through them. They have some good stuff, so... I was able to check some stuff out there as well. Outside of this, there are some, I would say, exclusives for, for certain things that I would want to collect, right? So when I first started uh, collecting, War of the Realms came out, New Agents of Atlas came out, and I was very keen on collecting a lot of these um, exclusives from a lot of these Asian-based characters. So me being Filipino, I was very... Um, like interested in collecting books um, where the first appearance of Wave came out. So um, there were some exclusives only sold in the Philippines. So I actually found them out online, emailed them directly and asked them like, oh, is there a way that I could obtain this book? Is there like, if they don't sell, how much would it cost for them to ship it here to the US? So just working out all of these details with them, just having this back and forth with them was actually a pretty fun experience. So I was able to actually pick up some books, you know, shipping is a little bit more expensive, but I got a lot of the books for um, face value for what they were selling for in the Philippines. Obviously they were a little bit pricier because they were exclusive variants for that store. but. There was like a lot of different ways that um, in terms of LCSs and um, FCSs, so far comic shops or Filipino comic shops that I would go to to, to, to venture in and, and try to obtain as the books that I really wanted. So outside of that, there were a couple other venues in which I started looking into things like um, antique shops or flea markets. So there was a place near me where there's a row of an like antique shops that I went to. There was a lot of cool stuff there. They have some tidbits of Golden Age, some Silver Age, some very obscure books. But, you know, it was just fun walking through the shops, seeing all of the these antiques and then comics next to them. And um, talking to the owners about the history of how they like came across all of these collections. So these are the ways that I've contacted and and kind of went to for brick and mortars but the the other way that i've obtained books essentially was from online so mainly ebay and some instagram i think instagram for me has been um like it's both the good and bad right you have to essentially make sure that you're vetting who you buy from um asking people who they've sold to essentially um have they sent the books in Gemini shippers or just two pieces of cardboard. So this extra work I think is well worth it because you don't necessarily have to pay for the extra eBay fees and whatnot. And if you form a relationship with someone, a dealer, you could ask them for future reference essentially if you're looking for a certain book, if this comes across them, just to let you know. So. I've kind of taken this and kind of used all of my connections to do very similar things. So for my LCS, I actually, well, I was on vacation. Um, I was in Europe and I got a phone call at 3 a.m. that time, but it was essentially in the afternoon, like here in the States. So I picked it up and this was my LCS from that cluster of three that I would go to that's about like 20, 30 miles away from me. And they told me, Hey, we just got this collection in. You mentioned that you're looking for X-Men and early Spider-Man. We got this book in. Do you want us to hold it for you? 3 a.m. I perked up. I was like, yes, please keep this for me. Oh, this is my grail. So this was giant size X-Men number one, a raw copy. Um, it hasn't been pressed or cleaned yet at that point, but 
I was like, I don't care. There's a story behind it. I'm going to my LCS. We're kind of forming this relationship. I'd rather buy from my LCS than、um, someone on eBay just to support locally. So it, it was just having that call kind of made me realize that the relationships that I formed with my LCS is, is like really, you know, could open up avenues for, for my collection. So that's just one. And、um, hopefully, with, with the more connections I make and the stronger relationships I make and the trust that I build with, with the With the sellers.、Um, hopefully, I could kind of expand even more. So, just like that, just like on Instagram,、um, finding the right sellers, people you trust. I actually only、um, buy from one or two Instagram sellers, mainly because like I formed a relationship with them. And outside of that, most of my books have gone from, from eBay, or, or I actually have not gone through Craigslist or other apps like OfferUp. Uh, I think OfferUp is, is an app that I, I learned from Reggie Collects. And there are other avenues as well. So, online, it's kind of fun. I signed up for Heritage, au- Heritage Auctions, as well as Comic Link, as well as Comic Connect. So, all these three are auction houses. So, these are the fairly higher priced books,、um, you could say. But it's, it's just fun to look. So you sign up. It's essentially like eBay, but they have a very specific time or spe- very specific window,、um, like a three day window where they're like, all right, we're going to sell these books at this certain time, and the auction ends at this certain time. So it's essentially like eBay in that sense, but there's not, in, some of them have been implementing some features where you can't necessarily snipe,、um, like kind of last minute bid,、uh, because if you last minute bid, Uh, Comic Connect actually gives、um, the previous bidder another like two minutes to, to up what they were wanting to pay for it. So, this kind of offers up、um, an opportunity for a buyer to like kind of、um, get the book that they're wanting. For me, I've never bought a book from, from any of these auction houses. I've just been looking and、um, actually was looking essentially for some of my 2020 goals where. Those were super rare books to find. Just looking on there, just trying to find out how I can, you know, make sure that I cast a wide net in order to、um, in order to get the books that I really want. There are also other ways that、um, I've kind of purchased books recently, mostly because of the, you know, staying at home and not being able to go into all of the brick and mortar places. A lot of my comic book shops have started doing Instagram. Live claim sales, right? So they curate essentially like a set of books. And then what they'll do is they'll show you the book and give you a little bit of history behind it.、Um, this is kind of a live stream, right? So let's imagine that there's 50 people in this live stream, and then the comic book owner or the comic shop is showing you the book. And then behind them, they have a panel. And then on that panel is like a shelf that says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So what they'll do is They'll talk about the book and then they'll put it on a random letter. And then, so in the chat, you say claim and whatever letter they put it on. And if you're lucky enough to be that first person who called the claim, then, the, then you essentially win the book for however much they've listed it for. So, this has been pretty fun because they essentially curate all of these books for you, right? So, a lot of the people in attendance are asking them, Oh, do you have. This type of book, X Men? Do you have Ultimate Spider Man? Or do you have Silver Age、um, Fantastic Four books? And then so they'll curate that, right? So they have this set of books and then they could kind of pick and choose and then show you that book and then sell that book. So it's actually been pretty fun because you're just hanging out in the chat, talking to different people and trying to. It's not outbidding. You, you essentially have、uh, one price, but then it's just trying to.、Um, Outclaim someone else by claiming faster than someone else. And you know, sometimes Instagram is a little bit laggy for some people. So it's been、um, it's been good and bad on certain days. You know, I just have to restart my router every so often. But it's it's been pretty fun. So throughout this entire time, there, there's a lot of different ways that I've been able to collect books. And there are so many ways that I haven't even ventured into yet, right? Like, Mm, offer up as an app. It's similar to Craigslist. 
Um, I haven't really used Craigslist that much, but I've been trying to build out my network in order for me to to reach out and try to find specific books that I'm looking for. And there's a lot of dealers out there, like sending an email, um, just trying to like kind of reach out and form that that first um, bond with someone and, you know, making a purchase and kind of giving good feedback and, you know, just that correspondence um, has been really, really helpful to me. So it's, it's one of the things that I found throughout this journey that I've enjoyed a lot. Just the conversations I've had at the brick and mortar stores with the owners, with the other patrons, just trying to get to learn more about what story arcs do they recommend? Like, what, how did they get into things? Where did they collect, right? Just a lot of these stories that everyone has has just been like a great part of, of this, this whole thing because there's just so much nuance to each person and how they got into this. So I think in the whole while while I was collecting, I was actually like building up these networks building up these stories building up these uh, relationships with people so it's not just collecting books it's it's actually building community so essentially from my comic journey to yours keep exploring thanks bye